Okay, so now that we've covered cognitive and psychoanalytical theories, let's go on to the behavior and social cognitive theories. Um, basically, these are known as behaviorists, and they mainly focus on how, you know, the behavior. Uh, scientifically, we can only study what can be observed and measured. So um, the three that are pretty famous is Pavlov's classical conditioning, Skinner's operant conditioning, and Bandura's social con cognitive theory. Pavlov you've probably heard of. He is the classical conditioning um, where Pavlov's dogs, of course, uh, if you have a stimulus, um, you can elicit a response. So if you ring the bell with the dogs and, you know, get the food in, so um, there you can elicit the response of they will be drooling whenever you ring the bell um, after you get them conditioned. And Skinner's operant conditioning is how, um, depending on the response or depending on the outcome, a, um, a behavior is more likely to occur or not. So for example, a baby does something and you smile at it, it's um, more likely to do the action next time, um, as opposed to if the baby does the same thing and you give it a really nasty look. So that's um, Skinner's operant conditioning. And if you've seen Clockwork Orange, that's kind of Skinner's operant conditioning. I, yeah, that movie is a little bit disturbing. So we have Bandura's social cognitive theory, basically saying that behavior, environment, and cognition is responsibility for um, development, or main responsible for like development. Um, of course, with the social, like the behaviorists, you have, you know, their uh, criticisms. Basically, you know, how um, there's too little emphasis on cognition, um, too much emphasis on the environment determinants, and inadequate attention to development changes, inadequate condition of um, human spontaneity and creativity. So, mm, basically, that would be the uh, behavior, social cognitive theories.